hey all your OS reviews. In this video we're taking a closer look at the Onyx Books Palma. This is a compact 6.1 inch e-reader that has a form factor closer to that of a smartphone with a taller 2 by one aspect ratio, making it a lot easier to slide into a pocket when you're traveling or on the go compared to the widescreen aspect ratios of all the other e-readers that we have seen in the past. And this is even more so exaggerated when we compare it against a larger device like the Kindle Scribe, also having, of course, the e-ink display, but again, next to it, the difference is actually quite night and day. This is really meant for folks that want to take something small when you're traveling and just instantly be able to read as opposed to doodle or draw. And one other slightly confusing part is despite the form factor being similar to a phone, it does not actually come with cellular connectivity. So unfortunately there is no 4G or 5G modem inside to make calls and you have to use either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. That is a departure compared to some of the Hisense devices like the A9 that can be used for dialing and making phone calls, which is one omission here on the Books Palma. So don't think of this as a true replacement if voice calling and again cellular connectivity are things that you're looking for. But if you're just primarily using it to augment maybe an existing phone that you have, then it might be an okay choice. And taking a closer look at the design, have to say that they've done a fairly good job of evoking kind of a paper-like feel. So if you look very closely, the back here, which is constructed out of plastic, is textured to resemble that of a coarse piece of paper. The rear also houses a 16 megapixel rear-facing camera with an LED flash. This is primarily used for scanning and documents in an emergency, as well as acting as a flashlight or torch in the dark. The back cover is not removable, but inside there is a almost 4,000 mAh capacity battery that also charges up using USB Type-C, includes a microphone as well as a loudspeaker. The Type-C port does support OTG, so you're able to convert it into a 3.5mm headphone jack with a dongle if you wanted to, because unfortunately there is no built-in 3.5mm jack on the top or sides of the device. That being said, the emission is also in line with other competitors, like the aforementioned Big Me, Hisense, as well as Xiaomi under their Ink Palm line, also do not have a headphone jack anymore with their compact e-readers. Now, the frame of the device continues to be constructed out of plastic, so it contributes to a pretty lightweight feel, only around 170 grams, but at least it doesn't feel too hollow or fragile, and I would argue you don't really need a case because of the more textured plastic build here compared to glass, for example. And on on the right hand spine there's access to a volume rocker that also serves double duty as page turn controls, so page forward and page back when you're reading a book. There's also a dedicated power key, and then located on the left hand spine is going to be a micro SD card slot to expand on the 128GB of USF 2.1 storage built in, in addition to a page refresh button if you want to manually refresh the e-ink screen to remove any ghosting. You can also set it up to other commands under the settings. It's customizable, for example you can double tap as well as triple tap to control other things, jump into your own programs that you desire. Now inside there's also 6 gigabytes of RAM on the base model, which is pretty decent. It's also powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 processor. It's definitely more of an entry-level mid-range processor by 2024 phone standards, but for an e-reader it is actually more than sufficient to make the device feel relatively smooth and performant. In fact, it's the exact same chip that's also being used on the Hisense A9, among many other similar smartphone sized e-readers currently on the market. So not bad for just doing the basics. Briefly covering some of the other top line specs, it comes in two colors, black or white. I think the white edition in particular looks quite clean, almost reminds me of a Meizu or a light phone in certain ways. Now the company also touts that it does have a higher refresh rate mode for the e-ink panel that allows you to swipe a little bit more quickly if you're trying to read back, for example, a web page. There's also a water repellent design, so if it gets slightly wet in the rain, it should still survive. Comes with the full Android Play Store as well for downloading additional applications, as opposed to something like a Kindle, which is much more locked down in terms of apps that you can run. And yes, the Books Palma does also have a front light, since e-ink screens do not have a backlight, that it just glows softly in the dark. If you're trying to read in more lowly lit environments, you can adjust the color temperature as well to be warmer or colder based on your preferences. When it comes to the asking price, I will say that the Books Palma does seem to be a little bit steep. It actually goes on retail for $280. The Xiaomi Ink Palm, for example, usually sells for around just 150 bucks, about half the price. 
Not to mention that Books also has another entry-level, more conventional 16x9 aspect ratio e-reader called the Poke 5, which sells for only $170, also with the front light and a very similar Android-based UI with support for the Google Play Store as well, measuring 6 inches. So it seems like you're just paying a bit more of a premium for that more compact, kind of cute design and form factor, at least on paper. No pun intended. But when digging a little bit deeper, it seems like the components inside the Palma do seem to be a little bit higher end than some of those cheaper rivals. For example, the Ink Palm Plus, as well as the Ink Palm 5 and even the 5 Pro, come equipped with 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM compared to, again, 6 gigabytes on the Palma here. So you should be able to run applications more quickly, do more multitasking here, as well as the built in storage is pretty much halved. Again, 128 gigabytes on the Palma versus 32 to 64 gigabytes on the Ink Palm series. In addition, the battery life is also halved around, again, 1,000 to 2,000 milliamp hours compared to 4,000. And similarly, compared to their own books Poke 5, this more conventional e-reader has, again, half the cores. It's a quad-core processor compared to octa-core on the Palma. It also has 32 gigs of built-in storage, so again, much lower, in addition to a smaller battery, 1,500 milliamp hours versus, again, nearly 4,000 here. So with those specs in mind, the price might seem a little bit easier to justify because you are getting, again, almost a two times faster processor, two times more battery, two times more memory, pretty much on all of those components getting doubled for the Palma compared to those less expensive variants, if you want something with higher performance, that is. What I will say, though, as my second big reaction is the size of this thing is definitely larger than I anticipated. Yes, it is still small for an e-reader, but... It's close to a pro slash ultra sized smartphone in 2024 standards. Just for reference, another e-reader phone hybrid device that we checked out years ago was the Yoda phone. This thing had a 5 inch OLED display on the front in addition to a black and white monochrome e-ink on the rear and it was considered as kind of a normal sized phone of yesteryear but you can tell how this thing is much larger by contrast. Here's how it compares next to the Pixel 6, so larger in pretty much all of the dimensions which is already a pretty large phone. Another older device, this is a Samsung Galaxy Note 5, also considered a phablet with a built-in stylus from yesteryear but this device is even even larger. This is definitely in the phablet territory, so the lightweight plastic frame I think actually helps uh, because without it, it would be a lot more unwieldy to hold in one hand. At the moment, it's still reasonable, but just keep in mind that it's going to be a little larger, I think, than most folks expect looking at the images alone. It's a fairly high quality, again, Carta e-ink display with 300 ppi, pretty sharp from a legibility perspective, although it is a black and white conventional e-ink screen as compared to Kaleidio 3 or Color. Anyways, the UI is again quite minimalistic and it's actually my first time checking out a Onyx device, so it took me a little bit of time to get used to the layout, but afterwards it's not too difficult to navigate around. On the left hand side, replacing something like a Google Now newsfeed, you'll find a quick launcher to access some of your favorited applications that you can edit, as well as a library of your most recently opened books. You can also tap on plus to add additional components and widgets down below. For example, there's one here for reading statistics. If we add this in, it's gonna add another tile here uh, down below that we can scroll into. Otherwise, we have under tools, just a basic voice recorder, a calculator, as well as the clock that are built on in. And these applications have been reworked by Onyx to fit in with a more minimalistic e-ink style, actually looking quite cool. And you're able to choose between virtual on-screen buttons versus gesture control, which is what we have right now. We can swipe up from the middle to essentially go back home or swipe on the left corner here to open up our multitasking tray, clear up any background apps or jump back and forth between them. We can also swipe up from the right hand corner to bring up our e-ink control panel. This allows us to go into a HD mode that shows the highest sharpness level for the screen or go into a faster refresh rate. Alternatively, dragging down from the top of the device brings down your quick shortcuts for wireless options as well as the accelerometer. There is screencast on here as well. Again, activating the flashlight with the LED torch there on the rear. In addition to recording video or taking a screenshot and perhaps more importantly for the front light you're able to activate this so you're able to see it more easily in a darker environment. It is quite uniform. That being said, like most other e-readers with a front light, there's a slight air gap because, again, that light is basically shining between the e-ink panel and also the glass here on top. 
So compared to most models without a glow light, it's not going to be completely flush or fully laminated per se, but it is quite even from a lighting perspective, looking quite high quality. You can also change again the color temperature to become warmer versus colder, depending on your preferences, as well as activate a auto mode if you want to use the ambient light sensor. That being said, one, of course, advantage of e-ink displays is they are non-emissive, and that means if you are in direct sunlight, it can still be extremely easy to see. And it's going to reduce eye strain if you are doing tons of reading, since it really does behave just like a piece of paper. Impressive. And that means if you are using a smartphone with a LCD screen or even an OLED screen under similar scenarios in the sun, your phone will of course get much hotter, since you have to turn the backlight onto maximum and it can still wash out or look dim, not to mention the glare, because it's a glossy screen compared to the matte treatment uh, on this panel where it looks better when there is more light around you. Yet another benefit of e-ink screens is they do consume less power if they're sitting on a static image. So if you're reading at a slower rate or you're just showing a background shot like this, it can actually sit persistently on this shot without draining any juice. It's only when you refresh the panel when the pixels have to rearrange when it draws just a little bit of power. So in my personal usage for just reading back articles as well as ebooks, it was able to last close to around three to five days before I had to recharge again. But again, keep in mind, if you are turning on the Wi-Fi, doing more demanding tasks like commonly gaming or watching videos, even though that's not the greatest idea on an e-ink device at the end of the day, it will of course still drain power faster. A few other remarks being that the bottom bezel on the Books Palma is technically a hair larger versus the top bezel, uh, which I do think for a more premium e-reader, they should have made it ideally completely symmetrical. It's not too problematic, but it is one thing I do want to flag. Maybe they can improve on in a next-gen model. I understand that it requires a little bit of space with the gesture navigation, but still having it be completely even, I think would make it look that much better for those that are really compulsive about these small details, especially since e-ink screens similar to OLED displays are technically capable of being flexed and you can bend it into different shapes, into curved monitors even, so they should have no problem in terms of making this part smaller if they wanted to. And I'll also just point out in the box, you do get a pen for ejecting the SIM card slot as well as included USB Type-C cable, although similar to on latest iPhones, you do not get a wall adapter anymore. Continuing with the UI, we can of course swipe left and right to expand on the list of applications, but there isn't really a drag up drawer on the Onyx UI on top of Android, technically 11. It doesn't really matter though, since you're using it primarily just for reading. Now you'll also find this little floating ball that you can rearrange to other spots on the panel that allows you to access some additional controls, uh, including taking a screenshot, as well as manually refreshing the e-ink display, so this can be reprogrammed to other quick shortcuts based on your preferences, or you can hide it completely under settings. Onyx has also built in a few edge sense gestures for the Palma. For example, on the right hand side, you can enable a function that allows you to raise the brightness of the front light or the glow light higher, as you can tell there, just by using this motion or lower it just by, again, flicking downwards. You can, of course, also control this in the advanced settings, uh, but this is just a little bit more convenient and it works regardless of what app that you are currently in. And then similarly, on the left hand edge, you're able to do the same motion for adjusting the volume higher or lower, as an alternative to using the rocker there if you are reading, for example, and listening to an audiobook maybe at the same time. Now down below we can jump into the more advanced settings, and again there is a little bit of customization going on here from Onyx's part, but you do have a kids mode which can allow you to disable certain applications. Going into desktop and screensaver, you are able to find a couple of built-in wallpapers Instead of an image, you can also set it as a digital clock, so it will just show a very simplified time info that slowly flashes. Uh, you can use it as kind of a display piece on your desk, for example, with a kickstand, which would be quite cool. Here's another calendar view just to serve as another reference. You can also choose between light versus dark themes as well, as you can tell there based on your preferences, how often it will refresh the data just to consume a little bit more or less power, and you can also choose a clock, such as an analog style, to also be shown. So this can actually look quite good, again, if you're not using it for reading and just putting it onto your desk. Here's that calendar view just to serve as one final reference, as well as the full refresh frequency. Five taps, meaning when we turn five pages of a book, it will then flash once to clear any ghosting, based on how conscious you are about some of that residue info uh, because of the e-ink display nature. And further down below here, you can also jump into 
navigation to go into the aforementioned navigation bar method if you don't want to use gesture control. Power settings also allow us to hide or show the battery percentage in addition to turn on or off wireless options to consume less power when we're not actually using the device. And then under more settings, you can also take a look at the aforementioned function button over here. Uh, so again, setting this to double press or long press for triggering other commands. In fact, the same applies for the volume rocker, which you can also trigger a long press function, say longer than 1.5 seconds, to open up a secondary feature as well. So these keys are completely remappable. And moving into some specific applications, here's a quick test of what the voice recorder sounds like. So we can play that back. And moving into some specific applications, here's a quick test. However, if you're looking for more advanced functionality like transcribing the notes into text, seeing a copy that you can then share by email, things like that, it's not actually present on the default application. Of course, you can always go into the Play Store yourself and download other applications, whether that's going to be Google Bard or ChatGPT for you to use yourself, uh, but it's not built directly into the first party apps. You can also go into a doc scan, which is basically again using that camera. So we're going to create a new document and then it will pop up the UI here. It's going to be in the ultra fast refresh mode, as you can tell there. Uh, so there will be a little bit more ghosting. The clarity is slightly decreased, but you'll be able to see a little bit more fluidity. It's the same mode that will be used if you are watching back a video, for example. And on here we do have grid composition. You can also turn on and off the flash manually. We can just scan in kind of a text here just to serve as a reference, such as the ability to crop the image in maybe just a little bit smaller there, uh, as well as flip the orientation. And when we are satisfied, we can tap on save. And a next step here allows us to then transcribe this into text if we wanted to scan the image. That is the OCR functionality or even save it as a PDF. We can also share this to nearby devices using Bluetooth if we wanted to. And there is support for pinch to zoom in the reader app as well. It allows us to see just a little bit more detail and we can change some of the kind of formatting functions as well. So again, the camera isn't gonna really knock your socks off, but just for some of these basic applications, it still is functional. The next application here is just gonna be our library of all the books that we have documents as well stored on the e-reader. It's going to scan through as well as on your SD card. You can even find files from the cloud if you sign in with other drives such as Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, so on and so forth. You can load in those documents as well. You can also search and this will pull up the keyboard which looks something like this. You can also find additional symbols in addition to letters here just by tapping along. Of course, it is, again, customizable running on Android, so you can use something else like Gboard instead if you prefer. So let's open up the tale of Peter Rabbit, for example. It just takes a split second to load. Again, fairly quick because of the Snapdragon uh, octa-core processor inside. It really is just the refresh rate of the ink screen as the biggest bottleneck here, and performance otherwise is very good for an e-reader that is. But again, if we launch back into the library, we can open up a second book, such as Heart of Darkness, and we can be reading back both of these documents at the same time, even though they're both belonging to the same application. In fact, if we jump into multitasking, we can see that we are now currently opening up Heart of Darkness and also the first book that we had open here on the side. So you can open up multiple documents, multiple books, and flip back and forth between them. They're all treated as almost separate apps when you are multi tasking and you can also long hold on a single word to bring up a dictionary to search up its meaning if you're connected over the internet by Wi-Fi. You can also add a bookmark here in addition to look up the thesaurus definition, hear the pronunciation guide, and even pull up a translation on the side to a second language of your choice using Bing Translate or you can tap here to go into Google Translate, and again, the volume controls will automatically correspond to page turn when you are in the reading app, which is quite good. So you can choose this or the touchscreen. You can also make it extremely small and detailed, but it's still quite crisp looking uh, if you're looking for kind of a tiny font. Now we can tap on the middle of the page once to turn on additional functions like an auto progression. So the page will, for example, turn by itself every X seconds. And under formatting, if you're looking at a Word or EPUB document, you can also change the font size as well as the font format. And the fact that you have this always with you in your pocket just makes it a lot more conducive for getting reading done. Now, the next application here is the Onyx 
store, or really their bookstore, and the majority of content in here is actually free. That being said, it's mostly the classics, so under copyright law, they've now gone into kind of the public domain, and that's why you're able to reference them now without paying. For example, some of the Shakespearean texts can be found on here, also categorized by vintage and classic. You can also go into all books to find a closer breakdown of various nonfiction and fiction sections. So here we have science fiction, for example, that we can click on. We have Frankenstein, The Time Machine by Wells, so on and so forth. And you can also look at, for example, Crime and Detective. There will be Sherlock Holmes on here as well. Internet connections seem to be very reliable in my testing, probably because of the plastic chassis. I was almost consistently getting full bars, even when further away from the router. And again, that contributes to a pretty fast process as you're downloading content. Of course, you can also download additional apps like the Kindle Store or the Barnes & Noble app, not to mention, again, side loading, as well as using Google Drive to bring over some of your other files and documents. There's another dictionary app here as well as a calendar app, but this is fairly basic. It also tells you what books you've read when you are clicking over here. And the next one here is going to be for music. Also very basic for things like audiobooks. You can also, again, install third-party apps like VLC if you wanted to. That being said, again, you would have to use a dongle or Bluetooth if you want to connect to wireless or wired headphones. The next tab over includes Books Drop. So if you have another phone or laptop connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you're able to wirelessly transfer books and files over to the device. You can even send files from the Palma wirelessly over to your computer or phone as well, so it's bi-directional. And then finally, a simple file manager gallery can also be found here. Now finally, at the very bottom here, we can also jump into the web browser. So this will allow you to, again, read back different articles and pages. By default, the browser also has the ultra-fast refresh rate set up, so it's not going to blink as much. You'll see a little bit more ghosting, but you're able to more smoothly scroll up and down. Let's try jumping into a more complex page like The Verge just to serve as a reference. And as you can tell, it's doing an all right job. This is, again, a little bit heavy when it comes to various videos as well as ads. So it may take a few seconds longer for it to completely snap into focus. But once it does, information is still more than readable enough. So looking at articles on web pages is still going to feel pretty natural and easy to use when it comes to reading. Text still looks quite clear with a fairly decent pinch to zoom support as well. So the Snapdragon 662, even though again it's not the most powerful or fastest chip, it's still doing a reasonable job here. Maybe the only slight quirk I will point out is the Books Palma does get a little bit warmer at the top section over here close to the camera, interestingly, when you are pressing it a little bit harder, maybe with five or six apps open, after using it for around 30 minutes or so, it gets a bit more warm on this part, compared to the bottom section when you're holding it still remains completely cool. And yes, you are technically able to open up YouTube, but it's not going to be the best idea, so you can expect it to look something like this. Uh, that being said, surprisingly, it's still workable if you're just looking at something super quick, I suppose, and again, the speakers are okay for just a quick casual podcast something you're listening to on a vr headset for instance now in similar fashion this and this is what that experience would be like VR it will of course drain a lot more power however when you are in the ultra fast refresh rate mode in fact really no different from a regular smartphone since it is so quickly rendering all of these images in addition to connecting to wi-fi but again if you're just doing simple reading it will last significantly longer and since there is the google play store it means you can download other apps as well including for example whatsapp Twitter, social media, in addition to some casual games, but I would definitely keep it very light. Here's also a quick example of another third-party app that we downloaded earlier. It is Webtoon, and because of the slightly faster refresh rate profile that you can set it to, it's actually surprisingly still doing an okay job. Not too shabby, uh, all thanks to a newer generation of this Carta e-ink display. And again, looking quite sharp, as well as really not bad, even for some of these vertical scrolling comic strips. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Onyx Books Palma. Ultimately, I think it's pretty successful in imitating a digital version of paper uh, with the ink display as well as the entire design just being so minimalistic and understated. Almost reminds me of a simpler time, in fact, that kind of frees you for many of the distractions, enabling you to read more quickly anywhere you go with this device in your pocket as a companion to, again, a mobile phone. It does have actually a lot of character to it. It's surprisingly fun to play around with. So if interested, you can check out more details in the links down below. Definitely a pretty neat little gadget here that has been the Onyx Books Palma